So we've now seen the Diffie-Hellman key exchange and Algamal encryption signal systems, and we know that if you can compute Alice's private key from her public key, that all of these schemes are broken. So that problem is the discrete logarithm problem. So getting lowercase a from Alice's public key g to the a, then you can fake signatures in Alice's name, you can impersonate her in Algamal key exchange, and you can read all the messages that somebody sent to her with the Algamal encryption. So that would be a real big problem. And so um, we're now looking at ways to break the discrete logarithm problem, mostly to understand how large a group one should choose. Now for this course, we're going to look just at the babysit giant step attack because it's a conceptually simple attack and it already shows that the security of any of these schemes based on the discrete logarithm cannot be better than something which is about the square root of the group size. So let's see how that works. So to recap the settings, we're working in a group G generated by lowercase g, and then this G has some group order L. Now I'm motivated that L should be prime, but for this attack to work, it doesn't actually matter. So we have some number M, which is about the square root of L, and I like to round down. So even if it's 4.7, I would use four. Uh, in books, you sometimes find this with rounding up. So with seal instead of floor. And what this attack does is it takes this A and splits it into two pieces of about the same size. Now, you can always take A modulo M, that gives our A0 in this formula. So taking A is equal to A0 plus A1M, no matter what size M is, you'll always get A0 to be less than M, and then A1 to be so large that you can reach any number, well in this case, up to L minus 1. And so the babysit giant step attack is a typical meet in the middle attack, or you might know this strategy as divide and conquer. So we're trying to find two ways of matching, similar to how we look at, say, a double death encryption, where we did the decryption on one side and the encryption on the other side and tried to find a match. Similarly here, we will also compute a table with one side and then looking for matches from the other side. So in this case, we're trying to find a match of g to the i, and then, well, that i will be a0, so we're looking at g to the a0 plus a1m, and we're splitting it up. So we know that h is g to the a0 plus a1m, and now we bring the a1m to the other side. So then we're left with g to the a0 on one side, and g to the um, h times g to the minus a1m on the other side. All right, so we're doing the baby steps, they're called, um, with the g to the i, and well, eventually at g to the a0, we'll expect to find a match with j being a1 for g to the minus jm times h. So from the baby steps, we're making this table. They're about square root of l many entries. And then the other side, we're just doing the computation. We're looking for j equals 0. Is this element in the table? Yes, no, it's not. j equals 1. Is this element in the table? And then we go as far as we need in order to find a match. So eventually, when we reach j equals a1, that will give us a match because we know that, well, a is equal to a0 plus a1m, so we know that eventually there will be a match between these two numbers. So let's write this as an algorithm. So the baby steps means we're computing this table, which contains the g to the i, and we want to have an easy way of looking whether the number is there. We don't actually want to have the table like being organized by the i, not indexed by the i, but we want to be it indexed by the g to the i. So what we're actually doing is we compute g to the i and then store it at the right location. When I was explaining hash function, I was saying, well, one of the purposes of hash function is to come up with locations, with buckets. And so here we don't even need a cryptographic hash function. We just need something which is well distributed. And so we're storing g to the i comma i at the hash of g i. So that's easy in the giant steps to see whether we have reached something which we know. And then once we've reached, well, we need to compute this g to the minus m. So once we've reached g to the m, 
but we stop one earlier at m minus one for the baby steps. Then we do one more modification to g to the m, and then we invert this. So in this drawing here, I needed g to the minus j m times h. And I don't want to do a big exponentiation each time. I will compute this as g to the minus m to the power j. And so this s contains the g to the minus m. And I'll just multiply by s each time. So I'm multiplying with another g to the minus m in order to count up on the j. So each of the baby steps and each of the giant steps cost just one multiplication. And so in total, well, I have m steps for baby steps, then one more appropriation to the inversion, then the inversion, and then in the worst case, I have to run till m plus one. So then I will find a match. And typically, I will only have to run to half the interval for the search, so then I have 1.5 times m plus a little bit. So as soon as you get a match, so as soon as you find a j so that g to the minus j m h is equal to the g to the i, then you know that a is i plus j m. Now we could optimize this some more. You could, for instance, um, avoid the inversion by taking positive exponents in the, in the giant steps and then the a is not i plus jm, but a is i minus jm, and so then we need to compute modular now. Not a big deal, but it gets often forgotten, so this is a bit easier to remember. And um, you could optimize for the success probability by going kind of one step at a time in both directions, so you're doing some baby steps and some giant steps, now that requires to do s with one big exponentiation, but there you can use square and multiply, and then you slowly walk in both directions, more giant steps, more baby steps, and look for matches. All right, so that is a really simple algorithm, and so you'll see some examples and exercises, and I encourage you to actually write them out by hand to see how you find these matches.